The Real Estate Revolution Radio Show is designed to educate Missoula homeowners and home buyers how to navigate the uncharted waters of the current Western Montana real estate market in an educational, often edgy, and high energy fashion with host Jason Baker. Jason will teach you all the secrets on how to win with real estate, from listing your property to purchasing investments. Jason has you covered. Be sure to check the home of the week, the good news, and current market updates each week. Jason is revolutionizing the real estate experience for over 100 clients a year. Welcome to Real Estate Revolution Radio with Jason Baker. Jason on location, I guess. I got I to gotta get a special sounder for you when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead and fire one up. Here. Hey, J- Jason never on too far location. Away with you, Jason. There we go. There's your special sounder. <laughs> uh, I love it, man. Well, we're down and uh, we just had, uh, you know, incredible uh, two, three days down here in uh, Arizona, just wrapping up our trip. And uh, we uh, were at a real estate uh, mastermind called Metrics. And it was a, I mean, you know, when you go to these things, it's just, you're just learning so much. And the reason why you're doing it is you want to be better for your team. You want to be better for your spouse. You want to be, um, you know, cause the more real estate you buy, the more time you can spend away from your spouse, which always makes her happy. <laughs> and then, uh, it, <laughs> but it's, it's one of those things where, you know, um, you know, as a leader, uh, you know, I have to find out where, you know, where I can improve and, you know, um, ways to be better because ultimately as a team leader and, you know, and as a, you know, the, you know, one of the largest real estate teams in Montana, our job is to just simply be better for our clients, uh, our families, and our and our agents. And so, if I don't do these things, that just doesn't really happen. So, but I'm excited about today. Um, going to do a quick market update like we do every week, and then what we're going to do uh, after that is uh, we are going to uh, talk about step by step how the heck do you make the most amount of money on the sale of your home if you're going to go sell it? What are the things that you can do? We started touching on this, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago. And then, of course, you know, we just went off on a wild tangent like we sometimes do, you know? Yeah, we went down the rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, we did. And, and, and we'll do that, you know. And it's just, you know, so, you know, to be too scripted is never fun. Um, here's, a, here's a quick update. I was just, I got this email from our, uh, from our uh, corporate office last night, and I wanted to go over this. And I'm sorry if I sound a little congested today. It's got this desert dust down here. You know, you just holy <laughs> cow. But active, list, active listings are up. This is a nationwide number. We're up more uh, here locally. But active listings are up 21% year over year nationwide um, compared to down 18% from the year before. Pending home sales are down 17% year over year. Price declines uh, are uh, five overall 5%. Uh, down uh, nationwide is what it's saying. And mo- listen to this: mortgage purchase applications are down forty-one percent oh year over God. year. Wow. We, yeah. So what? So and the reason for that obviously is rates, rates, rates. Right. Yeah. They they're they expected to raise these things. You know, the Fed rate right now is at four point seven five. They're they're probably going to raise it another point uh, this year or better. But they in in that is not necessarily mortgage rates, but it always has some indirect uh, bearing on where the interest rates will go. And um, active listings remain 42% below the 2019 average, however, and that, you know, pre-COVID, and 26% below the August uh, peak nationwide. Now, that is not holding true for us. You know, we were uh, between 60 and 80 uh, uh, active listings in and around Missoula County for a lion's share of 2021 when it, you know, all heck broke loose. And starting about May of 2022, we saw it started to see this increase in, in inventory slowly. And, you know, we've progressed from 60 uh, single family homes for sale uh, up to, um, Oh, right now in Missoula County, there's about 225 residential properties for sale, and that would include townhouses, condos, uh, manufactured homes, and you know regular stick built homes. And in, in Ravalli County, we're about 165 there, and so nothing's changing. But you know what changed? The, the strangest thing is, um, and, and again, they reiterated this yesterday in the course was that although we have historical low inventory, we also have a, like a historical low. Uh, demand right now. So normally low inventory equals high demand, right? right? Historically yeah. low inventory, you know, high demand. But now it's just not driving. It's it's just so things are plotting along, averaging between 120 and 130 days on market. Now, if that gets up to 180 days on market, that's where we're in what we consider a normal market. We're still considered inside of a seller's market, although I would venture to guess and can feel definitely 
that it's the tail end, Casey, of a seller's market when it gets into the normal market. Now, that would be six months on the market. That's almost hard to believe, right? Yeah. But again, it's not it's not doom and gloom what it is. And, you know, if we have these facts, then we can understand how to price these homes so that we can get them to sell. Every single expert that we, we just heard from them for the last three days says the pricing uh, should go down, you know, potentially uh, another five to 10 percent. And, uh, you know, so it's like if you're a seller considering selling, there's a few things that you should know. Number one, in April, you know, by April 1st, so you have not missed the boat to get in while there's still historically low uh, inventory. OK, so when are we going to see a seasonal uptick in listings? We're already starting to, but you're going to see a massive uptick in houses on the market come April. OK, so if anybody wants to know what their house is worth, whether they're planning on listing or not, I am super easy to reach at the 552-4443. Please call me and I'll just, we'll do a Zoom or I can run over there and we can figure out what the home is worth. Uh, as I tell people all the time, I don't bite. And I'm, I'm fairly nice guy. <laughs> you know, I'm sure about this. I, 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 I'm not, I'm probably not, you know, you know, it's probably nicer guys, one or two on the face of the I mean, earth. But, just, you know, to, just to be safe, love, uh, just to be yeah. safe, you might want to have a rabies shot, you yeah. know, just to be safe. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to definitely do that. You know, I guess you know, I go in there. You know, you, you only need one of those once a year. I go four times. I'm not sure why, but, <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> you know, probably because I, I spent so much time. So it was funny. I was coming down uh, the uh, – so I had to drive. So the last day of the duck season, right, we're out there, you know, because we had a little human nature because who wants to hear about real estate for 30 straight minutes? You know, you got to hear about the fun stuff in life. So the last day of my – uh, duck hunting, which was uh, over in the uh, central flyway and 20 miles from the boat launch, no cell service, and boom, my motor blows up. So anyway, that was an interesting five-mile walk out, no cell service. Uh, to, you your, know, five-mile walk out. Now, remember, <laughs> yeah, you get your strap of ducks over your shoulder. You know, you got your shotgun because, of course, you're not going to leave it there because you never know when you're going to go back and get that boat. That boat could become a fossil, you know. <laughs> just like, you could just be sitting there for a so, so we walk out five miles. We get one bar. Call the sheriff. He was just the nicest guy. Last name was Beck Told. So if any of his, uh, you know, family here is that, he was just great. He took me to my truck and I went and just picked up my buddy that was there and my dog and and uh, off we went. Drove back with an empty trailer. However, I picked that boat up and and uh, I dropped it off in Salt Lake City to get a new motor put on there because you could probably tell when it goes tick 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 boom. That means she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> she gone. <laughs> So she got, so I'd driven down to Salt Lake. Well, man, we've got a rental home over in Dillon. So I just, I stopped, I was stopping there to make sure everything was okay. And, and, uh, carried on, man, when I hit that Manita pass, but it was snowing, man, there must've been two, three inches of ice on that road and all the way down into, uh, uh, Idaho falls there, boy, that was a hairy drive. There were semis off the road and tipped over. And I did not expect that. I thought I was going to have smooth sailing, but anyhow, hopped on the airplane after I dropped the boat off and, and flew on down to Arizona. So, so the rest of this email went on to say that I got last night, which was just, which was just great. Is that mortgage the the mortgage uh, applications are down forty one percent year over year? So as a seller, in my opinion, you have to be a little bit cognizant of the fact that it's going to take you know before literally any real estate agent can throw anything on the market and it would sell. Now probably not for more than an experienced agent, and and, and that's my opinion. Um, but right now, actually having a step by step you know, 30 point marketing plan is so important. It, it is not just a sign anymore like it was. It is not just a beautiful smiling face and a post on social media. It is not just, you know, getting it in the MLS. It is not just an open house anymore. This is like an online digital battle for views, clicks, you know, looks, lead conversion, and everything else. It is so technical now and becoming increasingly more so how to get your home noticed over the now 225 other homes that are out there and soon to be, I believe by April 1st to May 1st, uh, another 100, 125, potentially more coming on the market. As more people hear about this market shifting and uh, prices reducing, I really believe uh, we're going to see an uptick in inventory. Gosh, we already have. So from 60 to two, we've almost gone up, you know, four, three, four X, right? Yeah. So, the the thing the thing to remember though is uh, before that rush of inventory comes on, it's a fantastic time if you're concerned about net. Now a lot of people just aren't like they're like Jason. I don't really care if I make a little bit less money, and that's fine too. Because not everything is money. Like you're certainly not going to sell a year 
earlier than you would for another, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars, and what? Because you know, you might have to go pay a crazy amount for rent or something like that. So that's not what we're advocating. But you know, if we don't tell people, then they're not able to make you know good decisions. Active listings. This is nationwide again. Active listings remain forty-two percent below the two thousand nineteen average. Forty-five percent of homes off market within two weeks. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So people are putting it on. They're putting these houses on. We're seeing so many expired listings, whereas before, my gosh, you know, the house could be like falling down and someone would pay you $9 million over the price. Yeah. But it was like, so 40, 45% of the homes uh, on the market are coming, are getting pulled off nationwide. Why, why is that? And the reason is, is, is simply because I think they're dipping their toe in the water to see if they could still maybe kind of sort of you know, get that crazy price from last year. And then they're like, Oh, I haven't even had a showing yet. You know? So what we've lost in this market uh, is the people who are just speculating to try to get a price. We're actually back to people who have to sell for one reason or the other, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, All right. So let's, so the point of today is what can we do to get, you know, what can we do to get your house sold for the, for the most amount of money. Okay. That's, these are the things. So the number one thing is obviously have an incredible agent or team that's going to handle it. Again, the number one question, if I were someone thinking about hiring a real estate agent that I would ask them is how much, so if you're selling a, uh, a, a residential house, you know, a house, a condo, a town home, a manufactured home uh, on 40 or less acres, I would ask the real estate agent, how many residential properties have you sold in the last 12 months or in 2022 or so far this year or whatever else and get a baseline on how well their marketing plan actually works because the proof is always in the pudding, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're going to list a million dollar house, Casey, and you're going to be like in, in this real estate agent comes in and they just have like this, their, you know, their hair is amazing. Their lipstick is good. Not mine, of course, since I don't wear it, but I, well, at least not that I'm going to admit. And, that, <laughs> and then, <laughs> I, re- I really don't, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm currently in camouflage right now. But the fact of the matter is, is that, uh, um, you know, you can ask him that because it's like where the rubber hits the road or where the proof is in the pudding is if your marketing plan worked less times than another real estate agent, who would you rather hire, right? And now assume that they're not a jerk or something like that, right? So, but when the, when we so the thing that we do is we order professional drone and professional uh, uh, photography and videography on all of our listings, right? It's almost so, like it's almost like a Michael Bay it, it, movie. <laughs> it's like watching a Michael oh, Bay movie. Well, uh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know. Um, minus the good looking part, but anyhow, but the fact of the matter is, look, the, you gotta, when, when, when the photographer uh, pulls up in the exterior of the home, you should have your garage door closed, you know, remove all the cars from the front of the home, right? Clean up the landscaping, mow, you know, right now shoveling snow, but, uh, did you, did you guys get some snow? My wife said she got a couple, two or three inches there in, in Florence. Did Missoula get, did Steve, I get yeah, some snow got, or did we Missoula a, get some? We got a dusting, I guess, yesterday, what we call that, a dusting. A dusting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you, when you drive my farm, by my farm, I have all the snow. It's, yeah. I don't think it's ever going to melt. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I just <laughs> sure. I just read that uh, Missoula has the third longest uh, amount or, or uh, days with the amount of at least one yeah. inch of snow on the ground. One hundred and eleven days. Oh my gosh! And I, I believe the record I mean, is one hundred and twenty like, something. I'm just like you're going to melt already. You know. I know. So, yeah. we'll close up them. I know. So it's, it's it's crazy. I say I just I have these massive snow banks. So anyways, remove the cars from the driveway. Uh, clean up the landscaping, mow, trim, shovel, whatever, remove any empty planters. You know, we always like in the spring, we got this big bucket, you know, have the most amazing whatever in it. And it's just sitting there. And now it looks like uh, an ashtray. So anyways, we want to remove that, right? We want to remove any of the toys, the sports gear, the duck boats, <laughs> yeah. the duck decoys, the four wheelers, you know, those guys, that may be on my place. Uh, soccer goals, you know, remove any trash cans that are up front, clean up the front porch, tidy up the tables, the chairs, the cushions. Um, you know, the, the cushions like outside furniture uh, should, you should try to have some fresh. Now, now I'm going to go through all these things. We have never, ever had, a client, we had a client one time tried to do every single one of these. And I think it took them four years to put the house on the market and then the prices went down. Okay, that's an over-exaggeration. But you do some of these things. Like, there's always that, like, how long is it going to take versus, you know, how much money? Because we're really up against the declining market. So we really want to make sure that, uh, 
Um, now, when we say that, you know, we still do get multiple offers on properties and we're not, you know, these things aren't being cheap sold by any stretch of the imagination. That's why the marketing is so important right now to make sure that you make as much money as possible. But doing these little things that make sense that you could knock out in a weekend or two or a week or two uh, is probably smart. Would I say do way more of these things and have it take six months? Please no, that is not what I'm saying. So perfection is not necessary, but better is right now. You know, these people have a much higher interest rate, so they expect the home to be in much better condition than last year. Last year, you could basically have like boiled cabbage before they walked in and it wouldn't really matter, you know? So, uh, but you know, now it definitely does. Okay. Um, general interior stuff to remove as much personal items, like your, like to, uh, to a degree, so we walk into some homes and there's lots of, which is great, you know, there's lots of pictures of the grandkids or whatever else all over the walls and stuff. And so that stuff you should, you know, you can go over to Home Depot or Lowe's or U-Haul and get some boxes and, and, and put them in there and, and just kind of remove them, you know. Uh, remove items and pictures from tables and hearths. I always say, you know, because I simplify everything, take stuff off of stuff, Casey, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, any any people love when they walk in to see things be bright. So, you know, replace your light bulbs and stuff like that and, and everything. And I'm six, five. So, you know, if you need help with that, just let me know. I was looking uh, around my, well, I was looking yeah. around my place the other day and I was waiting for someone to come in and give me a hoarder's intervention. <laughs> I got, well, you know, I mean, we've, we've only been inside for eight months right now, you yeah. know, jeepers, creepers. So <laughs> on, this, on this, on this episode of hoarders, that. on this episode of hoarders, we see how much <laughs> camouflage one man can have. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's no doubt my wife i looked over at my wife the other day you know my kids would come home from school and throw in all their you know multiple coats because it was freezing cold uh, a week and a half ago or so and throw all their coats down man it, there must have been a five foot heap of boots and things and you know they go out and feed the uh, steer and every the morning so they've just got you know muck boots everywhere but she's just I just looked over there and her eyes are just rolled back in her head. Cause she's like, really? I just cleaned this up this morning. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> poor, poor thing. Having a hunting family, you go down our hallway, there's fishing rods and, you know, shotguns and oh my gosh. So anyway, it's like a redneck wedding there, but anyhow, <laughs> um, but we're, we're definitely a Montana family. There's no doubt about that. Um, so you want to, you know, get those light bulbs fixed, put away all pets, children, toys, turn on all the lights, you know, prior to a showing or photography, uh, vacuum and sweep the floors, remove any of the visible clutter. You know, like you look at my counter right now, you, you get the, you get the Revel coffee maker, you know, you get probably a loaf of sourdough, a loaf of wheat, you know, butter, you know, whatever that's just out. Right. So you can just take all that stuff and put it away. And then heck, you know, after the uh, photos come, you can, uh, uh, photographer comes, I guess you can put some of that stuff back. But before showings, it's good to remove all that stuff. Um, open all the shades and blinds for the showings if you can and hide any electrical cords and chargers and things like that. You know, just walk in there and just be like, well, you know, what would I want to see if I was going to look at a house, you know? Um, you know, in the kitchen, you know, there shouldn't be any, like I was just talking about food on the counters, uh, you, you know, all your little dish towel things, you know, move those, especially for the photos, sponges, drying racks, you know, refrigerator magnets. And I can send this PDF out to people if anybody wants it. Uh, just let me know. And just I kind can, of you a, know, people a, can just email me. A honey do yeah. list, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is. A, I should actually send this over to your fiance, and you know, and she could just staple this to your forehead, and then you know, you could get this uh, get this done. So, but it's just you know the garbage cans and stuff like that. Throw that in the pantry, or the closet for the photos. Then of course, you know, we we don't expect you to do that for every showing, but for the photos especially, dishes from the sink, you know, place them in the dishwasher, or you know. Uh, like I never do, you know, wash them. Uh, dining room, you're going to want to clear off the table, dust and polish the tabletop, um, uh, you know, just get that thing looking as good uh, as possible. Again, if there's any, a lot of times in the dining room, there's pictures and stuff like that. You're going to want to go ahead and, and remove those. <clears throat> so, but yeah. I got something, oh, Jason. Master no, bedroom. Here's one, though. Okay, go ahead. It, 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 all this talk of getting the house nice and clean for photos. I've seen the photos on your website, and they are immaculate. You know, your, your listings are all immaculate. Yes. And if, if I'm to yes. get if I'm to get my house that clean, I might not want to sell it. Well, <laughs> that's exactly right. Well, here's the thing. If you're on the fence, I will send you this and you may end up not selling, which might be the worst sales pitch ever. But, you know, <laughs> that's OK. But so there's also two funny things that happen in life. Number one, if you're ever thinking about selling your truck or your car or your SUV or whatever you've got, right, go and have it detailed first. Because I might have just saved you twenty or thirty thousand dollars in depreciation, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. you can thank me later. 
Because yeah. I had my truck, like, like, I was I was thinking about, you know, we're all going through, you know, a, a recession, but, you know, although they changed the definition of it, we're all going through one, right? And uh, it's one of those things where you're just like, you know, we're doing this wealth series. We're actually going to next week get back to part three of the wealth series for those that were wondering why I did two uh, 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 sessions on that and then stop just because there was a lot of like relevant springtime data to go over with people. But um, we're going to get back into that. But one of the things was go through the, Go through your, you know, like we were talking about, Casey, you know, go through all your expenses. Well, I'm just, I'm like, you know, I, you know, I have the truck payment. Of course, my business pays for it. But I'm like, well, I could probably cut that in half. Well, you know, I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to have to clean it for, uh, I'm going to have to clean it for, you know, if I'm going to take pictures of it, you know, because it looks like, a, you know, it looks like a like kind of like a murder scene in there after duck season, you know. So, so it, was, it was one of those things where I was like, okay. So I went and got a detail from my friend Sheena down there in Corvallis. A little plug for her. She has a great job. And uh, uh, and when I got it back, I'm like, I don't know if I can sell it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like brand, like brand new. So, you know, I think that's just the, like a general life hack. Get your rig detail before you're thinking about selling. Because right now, here's the other thing when I went to try to sell the rig. Used to be just like with houses. Used to be able to sell the rigs for like ten. So if you paid, you know, eighty thousand dollars for a new uh, GMC diesel, you know, you could just buy it and then go sell it for like ninety grand, or, or put like thirty, thirty-five thousand miles on it and sell it for the same price you paid for it, right? Isn't that? It's just like definition of stupid, right? Right. Yeah, definition of crazy. Well, no, you know. So I did something like that and I put it on, you know, Facebook Marketplace and everything else, and there were no hits whatsoever. And I wasn't even trying to get what I paid, right, with the thirty thousand miles on it. And because I was just going to go buy something with like half the payment for the business would only have to pay half the payment, you know, a little bit better gas mileage and stuff like that. Well, then, so through the wall series, I learned like before you make a decision, go and do, you know, call your accountant on everything. So I called my accountant. She's like, Jason, you took a, your, 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 when we were doing your projections, you took a full depreciation of that truck because it was over 6,000 gross vehicle weight rating. And, you know, your, your, the amount you're going to have to pay to the IRS is $25,000 less this year. Not twenty five thousand dollars in write offs. Literally writing them twenty five thousand dollars less wow. um, if you if you retain the truck, right? Because I took a full depreciation versus over five years year one, and so she went over all that with me. And she goes, "It's actually not smart." And I told her what the new truck was and everything else. She goes, "Yeah, you're going to lose. Uh, you know, if you do it the other way and you just write off your miles, you'll probably get six thousand, seven thousand taken off your tax liability." And uh, it just doesn't make sense. So unless you want to lose nineteen thousand, because the truck I was going to buy was like twenty grand less, so it wouldn't I would have lost all those write offs and then really not, you know, have gained anything, right? So um, just decided to hang on to it. And my wife was like, "Oh my gosh, Jason, you actually made a rational decision. I can't believe you actually analyzed something." <laughs> I'm so proud of you, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. So it was just, I know, I know, she was. And I'm like, oh, what does that mean? She's like, nothing. Carry on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> another no. I'm, I'm really good at rejection. That's for sure. So um, master bedroom, make the bed, of course. Oh, and then the other thing, life hack. If you ever have a house cleaner, I promise you, it's kind of like detail on your truck. Your wife or spouse or, or, you know, if you're, you know, a good husband, you'll do it. Right. But the fact of the matter is your house will never be cleaner than before the cleaner comes over. Yeah. And I'm like, we don't need the we don't need the cleaner to come over. She did like a ninety percent clean, right? I'm like, oh my gosh, Sarah. She's like, Well, I'd just be so embarrassed if they come over. I go, Literally, she does not need to come over now. You clean for the cleaner. I've never heard of such a thing. But anyway, okay. So uh make the bed uh, in the master bedroom, clear the nightstands of all the personal stuff, throw the seat pap, I sleep with the seat pap, you know. Is that a HIPAA violation? Can I say that about myself? All right. So uh and then store your phone and your <laughs> tablet cables and stuff remove all the clutter from the dressers and tables remove all family photos from the walls and surface at least for the photos uh clean under the bed remove the body just kidding uh <laughs> remove all trash cans turn off, turn off the ceiling it's no wonder nobody ever calls me just kidding hey if we don't make people laugh i don't know what we're doing right <laughs> put away all clothing and shoes it's definitely jason i think if the one thing people know is we're just real humans at the end of these shows right so, right um, other bedrooms, you know, of course, make the beds. Uh, you know, a lot of times we have kids, right? So if you walk in my daughter Cassie's bedroom, it looks like a magical unicorn came in there and bucked all around and knocked 17,000 things off the walls and the floor. There's seven like inches of Legos and, you know, that should all be cleaned up. <clears throat> Good luck with that. Um, oh, have you ever stepped on a Lego that your kid left out? Oh, that's, that's considered torture in some countries. 
<laughs> you come up with all sorts of new cuss words when you step on one of those. <laughs> and then um, yeah, <laughs> there's no doubt about it. Uh, remove wall stickers and posters. Remove all trash cans, clean under the bed, remove items that may show up in photos again, turn off all the ceiling fans because, you know, that motion in the house, turn off all the fans inside the house because that motion is, you know, it's not going to, you know, bode well in the Matterport and everything else. Bathrooms, um, obviously flush, clean the toilets, clean the mirrors, put the toilet seats down. I mean, that, dude, I must hear that 7,000 times a day. Okay. Uh, close the shower curtains. Uh, <laughs> if, if it's glass shower doors, clean the glass shower doors, remove dirty towels and ensure the toilet uh, paper is rolled up with a nice little, you know, that nice little triangle thing on there you know, oh yeah like Fancy. they do in the hotels it's extra special so, touch it's how much, yeah so that might have been like the most boring thing you've ever heard in your entire life but the reason why we do this is you know it's so important in today's day and age to set your house apart from from someone else's both with the marketing that is done um uh, in how it looks because you know the first depression you know 95 percent of these people are looking online first like the first showing on your house is uh, literally um, you know, online, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. Now we've got some open houses this afternoon in about 30 minutes down on our property that we did house of the week last week, our 79 big bear property. Um, uh, Meredith and, and Nicole are going to be down there. They said there might be cookies. Now I'm kind of ticked off that I'm, you know, 1500 miles south of there. Cause I would eat the cookies before any of you could arrive. <laughs> um, but where this property is it's 79 big bear in Stevensville. This is about a 3,200 square foot house, all on one level, custom brand new home on 15 acres. The yards in, uh, it's in the, it's 15 acres of, uh, uh, thinned ponderosa pines. The setting is amazing. Looking out the back door, uh, you're looking right at the bitter. You're literally right at the base of the uh, Bitterroot Mountains. Looking out the front, you can see the sapphires and stuff like that. Uh, it's super close to like two barbecue places, which is you know really important for me, uh, right there in Stevensville. But it's actually you wind through Kootenai, the Kootenai Village there. Uh, the 55 plus residents. It's not in that, but you go through there, so you're actually going through the gated community there. And then there's a long paved driveway. I mean, they paved the whole thing. You go over Kootenai Creek. I mean, the setting back there is so private. But both those girls will be up there uh, this afternoon, and uh, they're you know, or yeah, they'll be happy to 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 see you, and there'll probably be some cookies there and give you a tour. Again, it's all main level, four bedrooms, four baths incredible garage like a garage to die for it has its own little separate uh office workout room you know with the uh a custom wood flooring there and a half bath in there right off the garage so actually that's probably where my wife would have me sleep if i ever bought it but right yeah it's just an amazing uh amazing thing but i thought i would mention that for the gals that'll be down there doing an open house because you know open houses in today's day and age you know we didn't have to do them there for a while but you know you've got to do everything uh, again now for your sellers and you know we're working weekends i mean here we are doing a show my team's down there doing uh open houses i mean we're doing whatever it takes to get these things sold you can be sure do you have photos of that place up on uh, the website it is if you go to the jason baker team.com and you just scroll down to the bottom right uh website super good so as far as functionality on the website i mean if you want to go search for any properties there gang uh or you know my listeners and by the way i appreciate people tuning into the show you know i know they do it so that they can fall asleep uh you know <laughs> which, which is great and we do really good to just lull them asleep but uh um you can look at all of the listings at jasonbakerteam.com and if you scroll down you know five or six inches to the bottom there you can see all of our active listings and actually how we market these properties with the photographs and again it's real professional you know there's videos with uh within there um, you know, heck, if you wanted to know what your home was worth, you could even go there and just type your address in. Now, I, I do want to tell you, when you do that, it is a robot trying to tell you what your house is worth, okay? And if you've ever had one of those robot vacuums, you know, they just bump into stuff. So it couldn't possibly give you like a really uh, accurate value, but it could give you a range. And if you put your information in there, uh, I, I will personally reach out to you if you want. You can also tell me to go pound sand, right? But I'll go over with you again on Zoom or at your kitchen table um, what your house is worth if you're curious. And look, if you're not even thinking about listing your property right now, don't worry. Welcome there. T you know, what's going to do? Take me 10 or 15 minutes. We'll just sit there and laugh and, and we'll go over the values together. And, and uh, one of two things will happen. You'll say, hey, Jason, that sounds great, or get out of my house. But either way, it would be good to match in. And uh, you'll have a little bit more data. All right. Well, it looks like we are getting close to being out of time. Real quick, though, if someone wants to call you up and get a copy of that honeydew list we've been talking about, what's the phone number? 
<laughs> yeah, so 406, same phone number forever, 406-552-4443. Um, you can email me, jason at jasonbakerteam.com. You can Google us. Uh, just uh, type in uh, Jason Baker Team into there, and you can read our 270-plus uh, positive reviews. And uh, again, or jasonbakerteam.com. I mean, throw a rock, you'll find us. All right, Jason Baker joining us on location in, in, in Arizona this week if you missed any Arizona baby if you missed any of this show or any of our previous shows you you can listen to them on demand at newstalkkgvo.com Jason until next week safe travels my friend thank you brother take care